So the project that we're working on here is our chocolate stolen. Um, I'm going to take my liquid ingredients, which is vanilla, eggs, and milk, and my pre-ferment, put it into the bowl first. Also my orange zest is in that. I add my dry ingredients, which consist of my flour, my yeast, my salt, my sugar, my cocoa, my cinnamon, and cardamom. I hold back on my fruit and on my butter. So we mix all of this on first speed for four minutes till we get a nice and homogenous and then we slowly add our butter. We don't want to add our butter too soon in our fruit because that will prohibit from gluten from forming. So we want to make sure that our butter becomes plastic before we add it to our dough mix. Once we're done mixing on first speed, we take a quarter of our fat, add it to our dough, and start mixing on second speed till the bowl is clean and there are no fat residuals lining the bowl. The trick here is we gotta make sure not to add the fat too fast, otherwise it will prohibit from proper gluten development. Having this nice little spiral mixer will allow me to mix it to a perfect gluten development. Once my bowl is clean, I add the second portion of my fat. The trick, be patient and don't rush the butter addition. Once we get all our fat in there, we want to test for a gluten development. It looks like we've got a really nice extensible window. So at this point, we can stop mixing on second speed and add our dried fruit. After the dough has been properly developed, we take our drained macerated fruit, our ginger, our cocoa nibs, and add it all at once to the dough. Now when we begin the mixing process, we want to make sure we don't damage the gluten formation, so we mix it on first speed till all of the fruit is properly incorporated. Once all of our fruit has been properly incorporated, we take it off the dough hook, place it onto our work surface, and just work it into a smooth round ball. and then place it into a sprayed container. Once we have it in our container, we can take a temperature reading of it. And on an enriched dough of this nature, ideal fermentation is always talked about it being 75, 78 degrees. But on an enriched dough, I think up to 80, almost 82 degrees is fine because the yeast is trying to work so hard with all the additional sugar in there that 80 degrees to me, I think is perfect. Take the thermometer out, close the lid, and we want to watch this bulk ferment in here till it reaches about twice the size that we see right now. So after bulk fermentation, we scale our chocolate stolen to 150 gram units, and then we're going to work them into a round shape and place them on a parchment lined sheet pan that has been sprayed to bench rest for about 20 minutes before we begin the next shaping phase. Okay. So to finish the shaping of our stolen project, you can do two side by side. You take them 
flip them upside down, right side up again, put them about an inch apart, take a dowel, and compress and roll forward, being careful to stay away from the front and the back lip of this. And you want to make that extension about two inches wide. You're going to take some chocolate batons. And then we're going to fold this back lip forward over the chocolate. And then with our dowel, just compress it so it holds. Separate the two shapes. And here you go, you have your mini stolen that you then can place onto a parchment lined sheet pan. Allow them to proof for about 45 minutes to an hour and then bake them in an oven at about 350 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. For another alternative version, what you can do is just take a little bit of orange marmalade and pipe it right behind the chocolate baton so that when you close it, it gives it a nice little fruity filling. So as soon as they come out of the oven, you want to butter them with some clarified butter and then allow that butter to absorb into the product before you cover it with sugar. I usually like to apply two layers of butter, but one is fine too. And then I let them cool completely, preferably for at least four hours, but it can also be overnight before I dust them with some powdered sugar. So to finish our chocolate stolen project, we want to give them a nice coating with some powdered sugar. And again, that's optional. If you don't want to put the powdered sugar on it, you can leave it off. Um, next thing, the way I sort of see finishing them is taking a cellophane bag and taking these and sliding them directly into the bag. Now you could, if you wanted to, wrap them in saran wrap first, but I think this way is gonna look prettier. You pinch the two sides of the cellophane bag, wrapping it almost like a candy. Then we have these pre-made twist ties with a little bow on it. Turn it around. Do the same thing over here. And then if you have a logo available as a sticker, it'd be nice to sort of place it on center and it's ready for sale.